Now we first saw the Ortega Hybrid at the Philippine International Motor Show and we received a lot of hits and interests with it on our YouTube channel as well as on zigwheels.ph. Now the Ortega is one of my favorite MPVs on the market today but it wouldn't hurt if they added a little bit more pizzazz and technology to it and that's what we have right here. What's going on guys? Roy Robles here from zigwheels.ph and we are here to usher in the new year with the 2023 Suzuki Ortiga GLX Hybrid. Now before we start off with the design of the Suzuki Ortiga Hybrid, let's talk about the color of this one right here. Suzuki calls this Brave Khaki. I'd say that you definitely have to be brave to carry this kind of color right here, but well, I think they did their market research and there are a couple of guys and girls in the market who actually like this color, but you definitely have to be brave to carry this. I mean, it's okay for me, but if you ask that guy over there, he doesn't really like how it looks. But anyway, let's start with the front end of the Ortega Hybrid. Now it's got the same look of the regular or the vanilla Ortega, but the biggest change you have for 2023 is this grille right here. It features an all new aggressive design right here with this chrome panels inside there. Give it a more serious, a more sporty appeal to most guys. You got your halogen headlamps and your halogen fog lamps. Can't go wrong with a tried and tested recipe right here. And uh, I'd say the Ortega Hybrid really looks a lot like the uh, previous Ortega and that's not a bad thing. So now before we move around and show you the rest of the exterior of the Suzuki Ortega Hybrid, let's take a look at that engine bay. Yep, I can find it. Yeah. Okay. All right, so under the hood, you've got the same 1.5 liter K15 engine that makes 103 horsepower and 138 newton meters of torque. Now, the only difference that this has from the regular Ortega is that you've got an electric motor assisting the uh, regular combustion engine. Now, we've got a 12 volt lithium ion battery and an integrated starter generator motor that helps with starting the uh, Ortega right off and powering the electrical components inside. Now, one of the biggest uh, gas consumers whenever you're starting an engine is of course, starting off from, st from idle, especially in traffic, and the electrical components and the air conditioning. So what it does is that it assists the engine by powering all those components, making it a lot more fuel efficient. Now the Suzuki Ortega by itself is already one of the most fuel efficient MPVs that I've ever driven on this channel. And this promises to be even better than that. All right, so heading over to the side profile of the Suzuki Ortega Hybrid, you'd notice that there are actually very minimal changes right here. The only difference is that you've got these all new design 15 inch alloy wheels. They now feature this turbine looking design to it, but it's still 185 65 R15 tires. You got your side turn signals right here in the mirror that they automatically fold when you shut it off. And yep, it is still uh, the Suzuki Ortega as it was the previous year. And I actually kind of like how simple this looks. This khaki color though, it really strikes you kind of different. You either love it or hate it. And that's the only thing I can say about it. You still have 185 millimeters of ground clearance right here. There's not much to speak of. And that's how I like it with the Ortega. Let's check out the rear right here. Now heading over to the rear of the 2023 Suzuki Ortega Hybrid, you notice that there isn't again much changes from the uh, last year's model. You still have this nicely designed rear tail lamps. You got this chrome strip that uh, kind of breaks out the monotony of the entire affair. You got your uh, rear parking sensors. You got a backup camera right there as well. You don't have any spoilers up top because this car is not pretending to be sporty at all. There is a, uh, a Suzuki Sport trim that we saw in the Philippine International Motor Show, but I'm not sure if they're releasing that, but I do want to see that on the road. But as it stands right now, it looks kind of simple, but what makes it simple is what makes it amazing as well. Now, here's one thing though. You only see one hybrid badge in the entire Ortega line, and you got it right there. Unlike other hybrids out there that are loud and proud about their car being a hybrid, this again is keeping it low key with just one hybrid badge right there. And before we check out the inside, let's open up the tailgate right here. You got a manual lifted tailgate giving you access to all this space. Now, what I loved about the Ortega is that 
Despite having, a, having seats inside in the third row, you still have a lot of space, a lot of cargo space to deal with. And if you need even more space, you can lift these compartments down here. It has a really deep receptacle for all your stuff. And if you need even more space, you can then fold the third row seats down and they fold pretty flat. So even if you put all your items right here uh, in the back, they won't jostle around. They won't, uh, you, won't <laughs> you won't have any spilled ice cream here in the back. And if you need even more space, you can fold the second row seats down and you can probably fit a surf floor inside. Now, one surprising feature of the 2023 Suzuki Ortega Hybrid is that if you're into biking and into all that trend these days, you can actually fit a full-size bike inside without having to remove any of the wheels. And that's a big deal. Let's check out the inside. All right, so we're inside the Suzuki Ortega Hybrid. And right off the bat, you would not notice anything different from between this and the regular Ortega, aside from a few things. So you've got this nice trim right here in the middle of the dashboard. And the previous Ortega had just that in plain old black. But this time around, you got this base wood black color to it. But I'm going to go ahead and call it a marbled look. The steering wheel is wrapped in leather, which I appreciate. It has more of that shiny trim on it. I do appreciate is that the touchscreen in the middle has a nice refresh rate to it. This does have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. You also have automatic climate control right here, which is great. Personally, I don't usually use automatic climate control, but a lot of you guys seem to find that very important. And you'd be glad to know that this does have automatic climate control. You got a digital display cluster colored one this time right here in the middle of the uh, uh, gauges. You even have a G sensor, which is kind of odd because this is just a budget MPV, but it's nice to have and it's there. You can even have the um, uh, some menu systems right here for you to check out how much battery you have left in the electric motor. You can see it right there. This, by the way, has regenerative braking. So you've got your 12 volt socket right here, another 12 volt socket right here for the rear passengers. Plus it's got an aux jack. Aux jacks are becoming a rarity in cars these days and I'm glad it has that. And yeah, this is a great place to be. And if you remember my Ortega review, I enjoyed my time in it. I like how everything is so ergonomic. I like how the doors open up to an almost 90 degree angle for easy uh, ingress and egress. So that's definitely a good thing for me, especially for myself and my Hytria. Let's check out the second row seats. And I'm sure you guys want to see the third row test, the torture test. So let's get right on it. So here in the second row seats, it might look simple on the outside, it might look small, but it's really cavernous inside. So if you're a claustrophobe, you won't have any issues right here because of this huge window that actually closes down almost all the way down. It's no problems. You got nice headroom. Uh, you got a lot of room for your knees and your feet. I am sitting behind my optimum driving position, by the way. I still have a lot of space uh, to, talk, to, <laughs> to jostle around. It's no problems. If you want to take one of your passengers or your family out of town, this is one of the best MPVs to do it in because it really doesn't sacrifice a lot of space for any, uh, any nonsense, any electronic doodads. I do wish that this does have a USB port here in the middle, some extra additional features, but if you want space, this is the uh, MPV to get. But again, these doors, they open up to an almost 90 degree angle. So if you want to get out, that's fine. Plus you've got a center armrest uh, right here. Unfortunately, it doesn't have any cup holders. You do have a bottle holder right here on the door panel, which is fine. So I really love how the Ortega is ergonomically. And uh, I, I gotta say, this is one of the more comfortable small MPVs out there. But here comes the torture test. Let's take a look at the third row. All right, so to get into the third row, all you gotta do is slide the seat forward and you actually have some space here to get into the third row. So there we go. Let's shut this door down. All right. All right. You slide the door, uh, slide the seat back and then there's a, a little bit of space. Wow. Okay, this is surprising. I thought that I'd find myself really, really constrained right here in the third row, but I still have a lot of space. I mean, I'm not squatting right here in the back. If you want to have an affordable MPV that can comfortably seat seven people, even with my height and my size, five foot 11 and a half, this is the way to go. Top marks for this one, the third row guys, top marks. 
All right, speaking of marks, let's take this out on the road and see how this drives. This is the hybrid variant of the Suzuki Ortiga, so I'm excited and curious about how this one goes out. All right, so we're behind the wheel of the 2023 Suzuki Ortiga Hybrid. This is the GLX variant, but this is basically the top of the line variant that they have. Under the hood, you've got a 1.5 liter naturally aspirated engine that's made into an electric motor. It makes 103 horsepower and 138 newton meters of torque. That torque figure is higher than the regular Ortiga by about eight points. That's because of that hybrid engine that electric motor so this is a mild hybrid vehicle when compared to a full hybrid instead of having to propel the car forward it actually helps out with a lot of the um, uh, the things that actually suck up a lot of the fuel for example the air conditioning system uh, whenever your car starts from an idle position during traffic or when it's on idle it actually helps out with making it more fuel efficient by actually taking over a lot of the work for the engine. So let's start with the ISG or integrated starter generator. So the ISG takes the place of a regular alternator that actually generates the electricity for the vehicle. In this case, the integrated starter generator acts as a, some sort of, well, distributes the power throughout the entire vehicle, the electricity throughout the entire vehicle, and at the same time also conserves a lot of the power and charges up that battery for you giving you a little bit more oomph, a little bit more fuel savings than a usual internal combustion engine. I argue that mild hybrids, especially in this, in this small MPV like the Suzuki Ortiga, is more economical in a way. It puts the price down and is actually easier to maintain than usual hybrid vehicles or even EVs out there because if something breaks underneath there, it's gonna be easier and much cheaper to replace than your usual hybrid vehicles. Plus, again, the fuel efficiency that you get out of this is just phenomenal. Usually I talk about fuel efficiency at the end of the drive, but here's what I got out of this. I got 10 to 11 kilometers per liter in the city in this one. Plus, if you go out into the highway, Forget about it. You got great fuel economy right there. I was able to net 18 to 19 kilometers per liter on the highway. But let's talk about the power delivery of the Ortega Hybrid. So again, like I said, you get uh, better power figures um, when compared to the uh, previous Ortega. In real world scenarios like this, I still get great acceleration, I, uh, I gotta say. The only thing that's holding it back really is the four-speed automatic transmission. I would have wished that they put a more advanced uh, transmission right here, but in our case, we only get the uh, traditional four-speed automatic, and you can actually feel it on the highway. It actually is wishing that it could move up to a, a higher gear other than fourth gear. So I would say that this is more tuned for city driving more than anything else, really. There is a manual option, though, uh, that is available for the Ortega, so if you want to row through your own gears, you got a five-speed manual transmission available for you. The best part of having a, a, a crossover MPV like this, not a truck-based one, is that you got great cornering ability, especially in the city. That turning radius right there, that's one of the tightest I've ever had. It's better than, uh, than other sedans out there. Now let's talk about suspension. Up front, you got McPherson struts and a torsion bar rear suspension right there in the back paired with a 185 millimeter ground clearance. It's all right, it actually soaks up a lot of the road imperfections uh, really great right here. And uh, I'm traveling right now through uh, this pockmarked area in, uh, in Ortigas. And yeah, it takes it like a champ. The suspension is tuned more for comfort, really. And if you're in the market for a vehicle like this, you couldn't ask for more. All right, so safety features of the Suzuki Ortega Hybrid include your standard set. You got dual airbags, you got ABS with electronic brake force distribution, you got traction control, and you got hard tech. So hard tech is Suzuki's way of making the body a little bit more rigid than the usual uh, metal that 
some car manufacturers use, making the car a lot more, well, a lot stronger than it usually is. Now, what that does is that it helps with, with during, during collision. So if your car gets involved in a collision, if your body is, is strong enough, but your panels are still soft in order to create some crumple zones, it protects the entire cabin during those unfortunate events. It also has backup sensors and a backup camera. It does not have 360 degree uh, view. It does not have any advanced driving assist systems, but at least it's got a cruise control right here so that it can help you out during those long highway trips. Your safety features inside this is fairly standard. Uh, what it does is that it helps keep the price down, making it more affordable for those people in the market for an, a good, spacious, and capable MPV. So pricing for the 2023 Suzuki Ortiga Hybrid has not been available yet as of filming, but you can check them out in the description box below. But as you can see, it definitely is still more affordable than most other hybrids, or well, any other hybrid right now in the market. But what I definitely am sure of is that the Ortiga Hybrid will be the most affordable hybrid vehicle in the market right now. So that's definitely something that you might want to think about. So that's a review of the 2023 Suzuki Ortiga Hybrid. Now, before I give you my final thoughts about it, here are three things that I don't like about it and three things I love. Now, the first thing I don't like about the 2023 Suzuki Ortiga Hybrid is, well, the exterior uh, look of it. Don't get me wrong. Overall, the Suzuki Ortiga has this nice understated look to it, but I feel like Suzuki could have had added a little bit more flair to differentiate the hybrid variant with the regular variant. So that's the first thing I don't like about it. Now, the second thing I don't like about the Ortiga Hybrid is its lack of interior amenities. I know it's meant to be an affordable hybrid MPV, but they could have added some armrests, some extra USB ports in the back that could have made the buy a lot more compelling, especially for those with big families who want to entertain their kids while on those long trips. Now, the third thing I don't like about the Ortiga Hybrid is the four-speed automatic transmission. I mean, you've got a hybrid engine right there up front. You could have had made it with a more advanced transmission system. I mean, four speeds is might not be enough, especially when you're traveling out of town. It doesn't maximize the Ortiga Hybrid's fuel efficiency. It has great fuel efficiency, don't get me wrong, but it could have had a, been a lot more with a CVT. Now we've got all the nits out of the way. Here are three things I love about this MPV. Now the Suzuki Ortiga Hybrid features everything that I love about the original Suzuki Ortiga. You got your 90 degree angle opening doors, you got your large seats, you got your high ride height right there. And it's just one of the more practical MPVs out there, especially for something that it's size. I really love how this works as a daily MPV. The second thing I love about this is that huge touchscreen infotainment system. I mean, a lot of models these days would feature a touchscreen that isn't responsive or doesn't have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but this one right here really takes the cake with its huge touchscreen infotainment system that's really responsive and easy to connect to. That's one of the things that I feel is mandatory for modern cars these days, and the Ortiga Hybrid has that in spades. And the third and final thing I love about the Ortiga Hybrid is the way it drives, and especially its fuel efficiency. I mean, some people would pile upon this because of that smallish engine, but that's pretty much everything that you need, especially in city driving. And that 10 kilometer per liter fuel efficiency in the city is just nothing short of amazing. I know a lot of guys out there would want to expect their hybrids to have, you know, 12 or 13 kilometers per liter, especially for a full EV. But with mild hybrids, they're more efficient, they're more affordable and easier to maintain. And I think those are one of the pros, especially with choosing a mild hybrid. And that's everything I gotta say about the 2023 Suzuki Ortiga Hybrid. I know a lot of you guys and girls out there have been waiting for this review, so I wanna know what you think. Drop me a comment in the comment section down below. And while you're at it, subscribe to our channel and hit that notification icon so you wouldn't miss any of our videos. I know you guys want us to take us for a longer drive. We'll definitely have that in the future real soon. Thanks so much for watching. This is Roy Robles from Zigbo's.ph and I'll see you guys next time. Happy New Year.